Hello, thanks again for watching this. Um, we're really uh, continuing in these studies in Titus. and um, We're in Titus chapter 3 and we're looking at verse number 7 and it says this, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. We've been working our way through Titus, a wonderful book in the Bible. We've been thinking about the the way salvation works. We've been thinking about the regenerating power of the Holy Spirit, the washing of regeneration. We've been thinking about the renewing of the Holy Ghost and how the Spirit of God makes new because of the power of God and salvation. We've been thinking about the abundant shedding forth of the Spirit of God on the individual. And all of this is working towards one thing. And as you read these verses, I'm told that really in the original language that it's one skillfully composed sentence in Greek from verses 4 to verse 7. And it shows the goal of God's merciful salvation. And literally verse 7 says this, In order that being justified, we might become heirs. So all of that took place, the washing, the kindness, the love of God, the regeneration, the renewing, the shedding abroad of the Spirit of God, that in order that, that all took place in order that being justified, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And that's a wonderful thing. We become heirs. What's an heir? Someone who is sharing in an inheritance. Somebody will share in some future wealth and possession. And we become those who have the confident expectation of eternal life. Now that's a wonderful thing. To be confident in what God is doing. It's a guaranteed outcome. Heirs according to the hope of eternal life. That's a wonderful thing, isn't it? And it's the grace of God that brings about justified by his grace. Justification is a subject on its own. A beautiful subject, a technical subject. It deals with the guilt of sin. It deals with a broken law. It deals with the price that is paid to restore what was wrong, to, to put in place what was missing, to, to repay a debt and to repair and to mend and to bring into God's rich blessing. The wonderful idea of redemption and the price that is paid brings about justification. God doesn't just clear our guilt and make us innocent, but he imputes to us and gives to us something we never had before we were saved. And it's by his grace. And God is working out his purposes for the glory of God, for the blessing of those who come to trust in the Lord Jesus. And that is bringing those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to share in a future wealth and inheritance that belongs to Christ. Now there's some many, many verses that teach about this type of thing. When Peter writes, he writes in 1 Peter chapter 1 and he talks about that we have been begotten again, born again unto a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance. And that inheritance, he says, is incorruptible. It won't decay. It's undefiled. It won't be contaminated. It doesn't fade away. It doesn't wear out with time. It's reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God. We are heirs with Christ, joint heirs. We share in his glory. We share in all that he has procured for us at the cross. We become accepted in the beloved one. We're brought into the blessings of God's great salvation. No wonder it says it's in hope of eternal life. Hope, remember, is a guaranteed outcome. Let me read the verse again. So that being justified by his grace, we would be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. I trust that these thoughts would thrill your heart and soul today. Thank you for listening.